All right, fellas. So last time, <sighs> we faced off against a militant group uh, called the Shadow Pulpit. Um, and this group was uh, gathered around an old defunct chapel connected to a former uh, nunnery where uh, your new little companion, or actually big companion, Erlem, the angel uh, had been abducted from um, and uh, had had quite the little battle uh, in the streets of New York uh, and dispatched a, a few of them. And in the aftermath, you guys went into the chapel to kind of poke around. We uh, very quickly kind of wrapped that up in, in stating that there was no real evidence to, to be found at this point. Uh, and a couple of you guys had taken some pretty decent hits and so forth, and there was some discussion about what to do uh, as we were moving forward. Um, there was some talk about, you know, number one, resting up a little bit, kind of doing a little bit of healing over, uh, over the night, uh, and then perhaps looking for some uh, solutions for Erlem and trying to get him back where he needed to go. Um, and I kind of forget what all else we had discussed. Uh, I know, um, Shatter was wanting to try to find some information about, you know, maybe trying to figure out how to turn him back, uh, mm -hmm. cause he, he really doesn't want these powers that he's got. But since our player that plays Shatter isn't here, that will probably be something that will have to be resolved a different day. Mm -hmm. So, knowing that you kind of hit a little bit of a dead end here at the chapel, what what do you guys want to do at this point? I feel that Maya is really focusing on trying to get Erlen back. Um, I mean, of all the, I mean, yeah, there's other people who have weird abilities, but he's the only one that seems to have a, an understanding or connection to what's happening to her. So, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, if that's a complete dead end, then I guess we can continue on and find out who these people are. Like the Sister Inquisitor, do we still have any of those? Um, they They're still... Well, the, the the two that are dead <laughs> are still there yes um and i will say that as you guys were kind of poking around the the chapel uh Erlum takes a moment uh over the the bodies of the two to perform kind of a last rites or something of the equivalent over top of them and after he goes to the shadow pulp uh he uh, pulls um, I think Mr. Cuddlebear probably aside okay and he says uh, uh, little one I, I, I feel I should let you know that this one uh, the one that the the dark one uh, had dispatched early on in your battle this was one of the men that abducted me. 
Mm. The more militant priest uh, that I spoke of, this was the one of whom I spoke. And he's here, he was uh, claiming you were an abomination and needed to be disposed of. And yet he is the one who brought you here. Oh no, not, not, well, <laughs> he was one of the ones that laid in wait. Um, oh, okay. The two priests, the older and the younger, uh, were the ones that brought me here. The younger being more gentle of the two. Uh, but this militant priest was one of the individuals that were here waiting for me uh, and was responsible, one of the ones responsible for overpowering me. Oh, okay. He must have been pretty strong indeed. So whatever it was that he spoke of to you, I believe that you had asked him uh, about the drug of K and, and what their involvement was. Um, and he didn't claim to not really know. That is, that is correct. He, he claimed that he did not know, but I, I do not believe that is the case. If he were with the other two, especially the, uh, the, the larger, older priest, he knew full well, uh, what was going on because he was the one that uh, visited the laboratory while I was incarcerated uh, with the Japanese man, uh, uh, Ingenuity Lee. These guys, do they have a tie to the that house, the house of the, what's that? Hmm. Blue Lights? You, you had mentioned to me the name of House of Blue Lights. Um, I, in my time, the short period of time here on the streets, I had heard in the religious circles this name brought up uh, on occasion, yes. Uh, it seems to be a, an evangelical group of some sort. Okay, so this all fits. Um, Cuddle Bear's basic motivation would be trying to get him back to where he belongs as well. Uh, angel or not, he's still kind of screwing up our, our our little section of the realm. And I don't like the influence he's got on Nyx. Um, so that would be his motivation too. Um, perhaps a lead within this house might give us a clue on how to get you where you need to be. Well, I, I appreciate your assistance in that matter i again as i said before i don't want to continue to put you and your companions in, in danger yes your presence is is potentially dangerous that is true sadly we will do what we can um but there's no other leads here right um, no, well, yeah, the only no, other really lead, I guess we have, is like Darius himself, though, kind of knows some people at this house, right? He's had some dealings with him, yeah. All right. So then, yeah. The we have to go into this house, right? Uh, in the chapel there, uh, we kind of very quickly wrapped that up last time, and, and I said, there's really nothing there to to lead you anywhere, so... So you've thoroughly looked around, but uh, unfortunately, there's no leads here. Oh. This yeah. really was a place of just happenstance, you know, uh, or convenience, maybe uh, more than anything. Uh, do we all want to go back to Ganymede? Yeah, um, I'd like to show the trinkets and anything to uh, makes the most sense uh, since see if they've got it. See if they've set a other a, a separate location up for us yet. Yeah. <laughs> So that we're not drawing attention to housing to Ganymede. And then yeah, we can ask some questions, get get some rest. At least yeah, I need rest. Yeah, you gotta on a little bit. Okay. So uh you guys wanna head back to the house of Ganymede then? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Erlen can I guess go back to this little lair for now. 
Um, Battery comes with us. With these guys out of the way, does he need to hide? Um, as, mu- as much? That's, I guess that's true. I mean, there are still people looking for him, but we took care of the main ones, I think. And there's no way to know if he does get ambushed there. I, <sighs> I'd rather, I feel safer having him with us. All right. Let them come along. Yeah, just call him Boo Radley. <laughs> All right, so you guys reel back up to uh, the house of Ganymede. It's probably about 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, probably at this point. The rain has kind of subsided. I'll pull you into my meager map of the house here. Yeah. It's kind of jarring, isn't it? (laughs) And uh, at this point, most everybody has finished dinner and they're just kind of milling about in the commons area. Um, And uh, uh, Darius is not in plain sight when you get there. Uh, Maya's going to sit down at her table and kind of gesture for Erlen to follow her. And she's going to start placing the pieces. Um, also, is her, did she leave her, her belongings here? Was this our base of operation that she would have left her backpack in? or? Yeah, your backpack would probably be there. Uh, but, I mean, that's uh, you know just whatever meager uh, possessions that you have, for sure. Yeah, but it had the box that the Unk or the uh, medallion came in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the cloth. In it, so. mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll get that and then try and show and ask Erlen if any of it looks familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, just as a, you know, started off with you. I seem to be known to you. you seem to be familiar. The a little confused. The entity inside you is is known to me and my circles, yes. Um, She is considered to be one of the old gods, um, a god that potentially pre-exists even time itself. Um, The followers of the Christian religion obviously follow what they believe to be the one true god, the maker. and in the years of prehistory, however, there were there were many gods, uh, and many of those b- gods begat others uh, of lesser power and some of greater power. Um, and she was born of darkness, and she has had many names over the years, and most of those we have discussed. Um, But she has been lost for some time and uh, and trapped inside the medallion that you wear around your neck, which, correct me if I'm wrong, has bonded with you, has it not? Yeah. And thus the two of you are tied together until you are dead or something causes her to be released. But you are her avatar. And because she lives inside you, you are able to tap into a portion of her power. This is not uncommon uh, among the so-called elder gods, uh, and in particular the Egyptian pantheon uh, is well known to lend the powers of the gods to human avatars. Now yours is more connected, I believe, to Mesopotamian culture. Um, 
that was when she fell into high worship among her followers. Where did you come by this medallion, may I ask? I'll break out the box with the, the cloth that the medallion came in. And then uh, I'll point out the address on the, uh, the box, explain that her father had been on a dig and I guess had sent this with her name on it, but to her grandmother's address. And after the blip, she came searching for family, friends, anybody who's left, and ended up staying at her grandmother's salt package. It was addressed to her, so she opened it. And that's how she's, she's now, I mean, her biggest question was like, now what? Like, what, what is this? Do I, is, is she just dating? And I'm just gonna just become her and lose everything about me? What's, what's going on? Tell me about your father. Uh, distant. And he was, he was there, but he was always traveling. And we would travel with him when I was younger. But once I got into uh, maybe later grammar school, uh, I was off uh, at a boarding school, mostly. And we were, we used to do some things together when I was much younger, but then we split. And it was almost like he didn't want me around any of his digs. So. And he was an archaeologist then? Yes. And that is how you believe that he came by this particular item? Exactly. But I don't have any of his work. Sorry, I just went into first person there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta listen close to figure out who I'm fucking talking to. Um, yeah. His work is, I guess, at his last dig, which would be this address. Or at least close by to this address. Or they might have at least know. Uh, but aside from that, I don't know what this is related to on the news days. My grandmother didn't retain anything past this the standard sort of grandmother on my mother's side. Mm. Now, so this was the grandmother on your mother's side whose home you found this in, correct? Yeah, it was sent to her. And addressed to you? Addressed to me. But you were not living with her at that time? I was not. Mm. Strange. Yeah, I was in upstate. Are you an only child? To my knowledge. What other family history do you know of? Dating back further than your father, your grandparents? Um, but I once told that was a, it was a great grandfather. Um, my lineage goes back to the uh, Latin America, Mayans, um, Guatemala. Mainly. Mm -hmm. And then way, way back, uh, my family oh, yeah. might have uh, had something yeah, mystic as far as, like, uh, I think there was a, he was, a, he was known as a, a shaman of sorts. I don't know what the terms are necessarily. But I could easily go back and take a look at some of the, the old books and, and little oral histories. Actually, there were, my grandmother was doing an oral history uh, mm -hmm. as part of museum's reach out program to the people that lived in that area. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, I don't really know much about the family itself. Um, my father's family comes uh, primarily from the East. It is possible that this connection to Mayan culture may be um, perhaps a reason why you are somehow connected to this dark goddess. Um, I do not know, I'm not as well versed in the subject of the Mayan gods, but of course in nearly every culture uh, there is always a, a, a god of darkness, a god of death. Um, so 
so it very well could be that, that she is the one and the same for the Mayans as well. If she's the goddess of death and darkness, why did she take a shine to you? Because she brought countless thousands across the plains to their final home, that of heaven, that of hell. She is a, um, a traveler and one that is known to assist those who are crossing over at times and condemning those that need condemned. Is there any way to, I mean, she kind of just grabs at it and pulls and almost scrapes some epidermis away under her fingernails. And it's just like, I can't, how do I get rid of this? Is there somebody else that's more appropriate? I mean, this is, it seems like it was, I kind of just stumbled upon it and curiosity killed me. My concern child is that you are not only her avatar, but also potentially the only thing standing between the earth and a very destructive force, a destructive force that has been imprisoned for centuries and if released, probably very angry and unpredictable. But I'm not an expert. <laughs> um, we should need to find someone that that knows more about containing entities such as this. Right. Any of this down here, we uh, pulled it from those people that kidnapped you. Any of this look familiar? The, the people that want you dead or gone or punished war like this i don't want this to come from me because hmm. if they don't like you they're probably not going to like me is this any of this familiar is it gives uh you see anybody wearing these things or are any of these symbols familiar from your i assume extended existence he uh takes a look at everything that you've laid out <clears throat> and he says yes i am Sadly, all too familiar with the symbols that are represented here among these metals. These metals have been handed down for generations and um, are known to be a part of Catholic Church and are most importantly well known to be connected directly to the Inquisition. So the, the men and women that now continue to be adorned with items such as these are, as they were centuries ago, horribly misguided. Okay. Well, Yuri, I now am more scared than what I was before our talk. But um, are you hungry? Are you? I mean, uh, I don't know. You want to you know, grab a bite to eat? Do you eat? I don't know. What, uh, I, got a, I got a candy bar. She just pulls it out of the bag and kind of slides it over and then starts looking around the room for a uh, column. I have a particular hankering for a Tostino's pizza. What? So oh. why? Why? <laughs> oh, wait, just a second. And then she'll get up and go towards the kitchen in search of a frozen pizza, but also really looking for Colin or Colin. All right. What are you two guys doing? 
I think I know what you're doing, Clint. Yes. If she's headed towards the kitchen, I will follow her. Okay. I would be. I would hunt down uh, Darius uh, to ask him about uh, the House of Blue Lights and just exactly what their problem is, and okay. more importantly, where to find them. Okay, sure. Yeah, you can probably track him down in his office upstairs, um, and he spots you as you arrive. He says, uh, hello, little one. What sorts of treats have you brought me tonight? Oh, uh, well, our uh, fallen angel visitor is with us. Um, they are getting food in the cafeteria. We have dispatched with some of these zealots that had sought to do him harm. But I fear that there are more out there. Who are these people, do you believe? Um, they are some religious sect. Um, they are partially behind the production of the K that has been going around. What would a religious organization be doing? developing a drug that would cause people to be to become superhuman I would assume it would be some sort of misguided uh, assumption of their own divine rights to wield such powers hmm. but who knows um, I would um uh, Ask more of this House of Blue Lights that you had spoken of before, who seem to be opposed to the superhuman entities. I believe that there might be a connection. Hmm. Well, to be honest, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. Yes. There's also, there are many people that believe in fighting fire with fire. Yeah, that's true, yes. It's been done for ages. I would like to seek these people out. No. Oh. That might be a feat in, of it, in and of itself. Loss is, and has been, apparently since the blip been amassing a bit of a uh, massive following um, it's my understanding that he is on the verge of going at least across the country with his organization uh, and perhaps even further than that there's been rumblings that uh, there's going to be a uh, a news network that he is setting up which is why he is here in New York Hmm. Propaganda. Yes. Yes. He's from the area, and I've had run-ins run with him over the, over the years, but now that I've set this up, he the heat, shall we say, has certainly been cranked up um, since the blip, and that has certainly lit a fire under him to expediate uh, his process and in increasing his numbers increasing his supporters and uh getting his word out and yeah. he has stopped he has stopped short of making direct direct threats to me uh but there's a certain tone that is associated with a lot of his uh phone conversations hmm. He certainly doesn't shine on what we're doing here. Right. Um, he has a local office here, though, or some sort of local headquarters? Mm, I would almost call it a compound. Oh. Mm. 
they've redone a uh, uh, small uh, but uh, powerful little skyscraper uh, here. It stands about 14 stories tall, and they've been redoing it for the last couple of months leading up to the blip. And uh, as luck would have it, it came very close to completion by the time the blip happened. Interesting. Perhaps we can find our way inside this compound. Mm. Just have a look around. Uh, speaking of the, how goes our search for uh, a smaller base of operation for me and my crew? Well, Martin Lee and I have been speaking about that since we since we last spoke. Um, Martin. My aunt feels to be in your debt um, and I think would like to help you. Uh, he's still staying here. We still have him under our protection, so to speak, even though it was under our protection that he got shot. Uh, but he has chosen to stay here um, with us, at least for the time being. He was hoping that you all would return soon. So uh, perhaps a conversation with him, we might be able to sort something out. Yeah. I will see him out next. Okay. All right. So Maya and Colin, you guys have <clears throat> met back up. It sounds like in the kitchen. Yeah. She goes into the, the freezer <clears throat> and starts uh, first, just kind of moving things aside, looking for her toast, you know, pizza or whatever. And then she gets more and more agitated until the point where she starts slamming it. And then she just kind of stands there and starts to cry. No, um, I'll just walk up and put my, say Maya and I put my hand on her shoulder. She kind of just goes a little limp on that shoulder and says, know if we have Tostino's pizzas. Um, I, 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 th I think we do. Um, I kind of pull her around to face me. And She'll uh, close the, as she does, she closes the, the freezer door and just says, the angel doesn't eat anything else, evidently. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find him something. Are you okay? I'm possessed by God. No, I'm not okay. Yeah. Do we have anything to do? Because I don't know what else to do. So. We'll. Yeah, we've we've got plenty of things to do. Um. What can I do to help? Uh, if you see me losing control, kill me. Uh, Evidently, it could be a global catastrophe if I don't keep my emotions in check. I'm not the best person to probably be talking about this. But yeah. from what I understand of the gods... We're only giving what you can handle from what I've been told by people. You got a lot so, of references there by people. Really? Come on, Colin. I, I don't know. She kind of laughs and <laughs> you really do suck I, at this. You I, just, I, I know I do. I. But if there's one person I know that I think can handle it, it's you. Yeah. You're strong. You've shown me how strong you are. Yeah, you scared the shit out of me a couple times, but you made it through it and you kept it in control. You're going to be okay. We'll make Malachi sure. I might have a thing to say or two about that. Little bear thinks, kiss her. <laughs> You're nowhere near us. 
I can so. He's eavesdropping. <laughs> so, fucking dancing, singing crab. You, you see me. <laughs> yeah, kiss the girl. <laughs> like, pause for a second. No, um... I know you think you're alone. But we got this. You're here with us for a reason. Without you, we wouldn't have made it this far. So, hey. I put my hand on her other shoulder. And I just look her in the eye. And I say, You know, I'm the wrong person to be blowing smoke with. I'm not blowing smoke. Good. And she kind of just touches it and then kisses you with her finger. And then says, And then she just walks. She walks away. And I'll look, I'll get a Totina's pizza out of the uh, (laughs) freezer and put it in the oven. She'll kind of look over as you pull the Tostinos out of the freezer. And she kind of just gives you a smile and then kind of does that around the corner and goes out into the cafeteria. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cuddle Bear, you want to talk to Mar- Martin? Uh, and where's Martin? Where's um, he is, let's see here, where could he be? Um, they've kind of set him up in his own room, uh, off in the, uh, lower right-hand, uh, quadrant, uh, down here. He, he's got just kind of a little space that, that they've set up for him right in this area, right in here. So just just off to the side of the dorms. I'm trying to zoom out, but I'm mm. there we go. Yeah, right in here. People, people, people. And where would the, the kitchen? Oh, where would the kitchen be? Uh, that's on the main floor. Um, Absolutely. like right in here. Okay, where did you say he was? No, I Sorry, see. he's right in here. Oh. Mr. Lee. I just walked through the door. Alexander, yes. Yes. Um, how goes the search for a new base of operations for me and my crew? I'm just going to start referring to you guys as my crew. <laughs> um, you've spoken with uh, Darius, I assume. I have. He said that you had felt uh, uh, debt in our debt and wanted to help us in our uh, search for new digs, as the, the humans referred to it. With your help and the uh, finances from Mr. Stark, we should be able to find something fairly decent, I would hope. I feel a bit responsible for putting you all in this position, Um, especially not having known truly what you were capable of uh, initially, which makes me feel a little bit better in the end. But... Your interests had aligned with ours. We would have been on this path regardless. Do not feel responsible. Well, that's good to know. But there's still the fact that you're a cat. I am. And the others that are with you are really teenagers. They are. Um, or at least very young adults that are still trying to figure out their way in the world and and now also doubled on to that, finding that they have uh, superpowers to contend with. And, you know, myself being an individual who has only had to deal with that for about the last three years or so, I can certainly empathize. So, yes, I think 
I can help you all out in trying to find a place where we can set you up. Um, I have some properties around town uh, that are not in the best condition. You know, they are different uh, areas that I've been looking at expanding uh, feast uh, and setting up satellite uh, spots where, where people can find solace. Um, I do have one that I think it was you that had mentioned perhaps someplace close to Central Park uh, yes. that has been sitting empty for a while uh, and under the circumstances and not being able to find a contractor that can help me out during the um, catastrophe that we currently find ourselves under. I think that at least this would be some place that we could begin to work together to try to set up as a home base for you to where you would not be drawing further attention to the house of Ganymede. Yes, we need to be able to keep them safe as a, a haven, mm -hmm. perhaps even a, a school for exceptional children. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to be uh, the headmaster of a school such as that, but uh, at Would least it will be a place for you all to quietly go when you need to go there and and not be bothered with uh say an assassin trying to <laughs> to shoot you through the neck yes um it's an old clinic uh that i think we could probably work with and and uh, as you said with stark's money uh be able to um kind of create a little base of operations for you um it's going to take me a couple of days probably to make the arrangements and uh at least get it to a livable um state i think for you all but i mean if you all want to in the next couple of days we can meet up there and i can show you around the place that would be ex excellent thank you a couple days hence yes okay uh i have another question for you mm -hmm. you have this uh alternate persona, as it were, correct? I do. It is uh, somewhat of a darker version of yourself, from what I understand. Yes. And control is an issue. It can be, at times, but we have a mutual understanding. Yes, a member of my team is somewhat in a similar situation but I fear that her control may not be as good as yours. I don't know much about Maya. That's her name, right? Yes. But I can see the struggle, yes. I, I recognize that. Um, I will say that the struggle that I am dealing with is probably much different than what she is dealing with. Uh, for me, it is my own personal inner, inner demons. Yes. Whereas hers a very real, separate demon, as it were. But still. Is this... Do you believe that this is like a possession of some sort? Yes, almost like a... Um, not even possession, more like an imprisonment. That is kind of a symbiotic. It is strange to me. Hmm. But she is still but a child and prone to emotions and prone to lapses of uh, strength and will disconcerns me. Hmm. 
Darius and I were discussing you all uh, while you were gone. And a name came up that is somewhat of a mutual acquaintance of ours that perhaps you know, we thought, knowing that you had this angel spirit of the way uh, in the subway here um, that is now in the cafeteria is now in the cafeteria perhaps and I don't know this man very well I think Darius knows him a little bit better um, but he is from my homeland and I believe now sits uh, in the former residence that you would know of Dr. Strange. Um, um, a gentleman from Hong Kong by the name of Wong. Okay. Dr. Strange and Mr. Wong. Just Wong. Oh. Um, oh, I've only I've only met the man perhaps on two or three occasions, and and a lot of this was just in my dealings with the homeless here and so forth. Um, I think that Darius knows has had more uh, interaction with him over the years, uh, but perhaps speaking with uh, with Wong might lead you on a path to answering some more questions and perhaps uh put you in contact with someone that knows more about the uh angelic realm excellent i will seek out this long and he certainly knows about demons okay um i have something else i would ask you uh, but that would be like a separate kind of thing uh, outside of what the people listening <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, if you want to send me a, a, a Facebook message on that I'll take a look at that and then uh, I, if I can answer it right now cats. I will yeah. <laughs> okay um, interesting Cat's after, got secrets. After that, uh, Cuddle Bear would head to see what's going on with everybody since it's been a minute. He's going to check in with okay. the peeps. Maybe he's right. here. Good. Is the pizza done? Pizza's done. Yeah, you you, uh, you, you yeah. can take that back to I'll, I'll uh, take back to, to take that back to Erlem. Mm -hmm. mm, so I'm walking up and set it down. Um, Maya said you wanted a pizza. I'm there. I went back to Erlem. Oh, did you? Okay. Here's your okay. pizza. Yeah. She uh, taps Erlim on the shoulder as you come up from behind. And she kind of smiles at you and then taps him to let him know that she kind of just points. Okay. Oh, thank you. I've been craving one of these since I've been on this plane. Weird thing to crave. You're suggesting that you have this on other planes? That's just a matter of fact. And it's oh no! A anytime I am on the Earth plane, I uh, I, I like to have the Tostinos. Uh, I've been visiting here since the 1960s, and uh, it it is my favorite of the of the human pizzas. That's sick. I know, right? Wait till he eats, like you know. Oh, I guess the Tostinos pizza. <laughs> And he uh, just he just picks it up and he just shoves it in the hole, <laughs> <laughs> and it just disappears <laughs> into his face. That is not the most disgusting thing I've seen today. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. Um, I need some sleep. You look rough. Yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, Good night. And you should, and really, we should have already done this. Uh, after the battle, 
Um, you would have healed up um, your endurance rank. What's going on with that? And then oh, I gotta check this out here. Hold on a second. It's been. I always yeah. Kinda, Marlo's so weird about this. Kind of get screwed up with this. Yeah. Just pull it up here in the. Uh, I also have an issue with my two um, uh, physical beings. Like they have different stats, so I don't know how that right. will work. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Give me one second here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys are resting in order to kind of mm -hmm. get uh, get back up to as close to normal as possible, right? Um, was there anything, Cuddle Bear, that you were wanting to do? I, I'm going to read your texts here. Okay, got it. And we will discuss that further later. And, and I may just send you a, a message back on that with uh, the response there. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, if it's not too late, um, I would go talk to Darius again about uh, this Doctor Strange and Mr. Wong. Um, yeah, and he will discuss with you... Like, just the, where their whereabouts, like how I could uh, get in contact with them. And... Um, it's, it's come to my attention by Wong himself um, that Doctor Strange was unfortunately one of the fallen during the blip um, and made some very difficult decisions uh, which he did not share with me um, but Wong now has in Doctor Strange's absence taken over the title of Sorcerer Supreme for this realm. Sorcerer Supreme? I believe he has his hands full at this point, but I might be able to pull some strings and give you an opportunity to be able to be seen by him. He and I go back quite a ways. I would be most appreciative. But I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I'll try to make a visit to him tomorrow. Yes, if he has ways of... Uh, if he knows the ways of realms and the travel between them, he could be our best help, our best bet at getting our angel friend back. Uh, to where he needs to be. I'll do what I can. I can't promise anything, just uh, depending on how busy he is or whether he's even here on this plane or not. Uh, but um, I could pull some strings. Excellent. I will bid you good night. Okay. All right. Well, the next morning. Um, you guys wake up and um, our friend what is her name where is that Gertrude Janine yes Janine uh, she comes rushing into uh be, well, actually, before she rushes into the boys' dorm, <laughs> she shakes Nick's awake. Come with me, quick. And she runs into the boys' uh, dorm and wakes you guys up. Oh, it's Janice, not Janine. Janice, yeah, yeah. There we go, sorry. Uh, Yanizeski. <laughs> she comes running in. Guys, you, you got to wake up. We, we, we got to go into the cafeteria right now. Come on. Okay. You, you got to see this. Um, and she pulls um, Darius out with you guys uh, 
Mr. Lee is already out there and he's got a cup of coffee in the newspaper that are laid out on the table in front of him. Uh, and they've got the TV on uh, in the cafeteria. God. And one of the other kids uh, hits the rewind on the DVR uh, and takes you back to an early morning uh, news report. And the, uh, the newscaster says, a burgeoning religious organization known as the House of Blue Lights has come <laughs> forward with a shocking footage of a confrontation between members of their organization and a group of young superpowered vigilantes that occurred last night in Midtown Manhattan. Some of the footage you are about to see is graphic. Viewer discretion is advised. And on the scene, reporter appears and stands outside of the House of Blue Lights. And I'll pull that up for you so you can see what this place looks like. There you go. Cool. Uh, and this reporter uh, addresses the camera. The enig enigmatic leader of the House of Blue Lights, an evangelical organization on the cusp of going global with their on-air programming, has come forward with video footage of a violent attack by a gang of superpowered individuals resulting in the death of two members of their church. Reverend Stephen Loss met with us earlier to speak on this matter here at the corporate op headquarters of the House of Blue Lights. Stephen Loss now appears on camera and speaks to the reporter. Loss is an older man with thinning white hair that looks an awful lot like John Lithgow. <laughs> <laughs> he is seated in a wheelchair and wears a black robe, a priest collar, and a long blue stole around his neck. Our church was struck by tragedy last night when a roving band of superpowered teens murdered two members of my congregation in cold blood. The House of Blue Lights has risen from the ashes of all those lost in the great cataclysm that has struck our earth due to the sudden increase of superpowered individuals like the so-called Avengers. The population of these self-proclaimed gods has risen sharply in the last decade, and now we, normal humans, have paid the ultimate price. Half of the population of the Earth has been wiped out due to the actions of supermen and aliens playing with the lives of those that they feel are beneath them. In the aftermath of the cataclysm, we sit perched on the edge of true Armageddon, and the superpowers are now coming out of the woodwork to wreak havoc on those that are left behind. My church has been secretly waging a campaign to corral errant superhumans and bring them to justice so they can pay for their crimes against humanity. Several members of my flock were on the trail of a demonic fallen angel who apparently had sur surrounded himself with a gang of these super superpowered vag vagrants. When they confronted the group, they were viciously attacked and two members were killed in the altercation. The following footage, uh, and sorry, this switches to the, uh, the reporter. The following footage was provided to us by Rever Reverend Loss. It is not for the faint of heart. And this footage is cleverly edited to play in favor oh, of the House of Blue Lights. The images are obviously coming from traffic cameras and security cameras in the area that you guys were in last night. In it, you see the man that you now know as the Shadow Pope, Shadow Pope, <laughs> uh, holding his hands up and stating, hold brother, stay thy hand. I mean, you children no harm. 
and a shroud of darkness overcomes him and he responds with, I ask you, please stop. This creature that you say you have befriended is no angel. He has fallen from grace. He has fallen from heaven. He is as the demons, as Lucifer. You cannot trust him. You need not trust us, but we request that you, re you turn the fallen angel back over to us. And then at this point, this, the priest is slammed from above by a dark figure and lies motionless on the pavement in front of the old chapel. The video then shifts to Sister Inquisitor, webbed to the side of a building, as Spider Wasp interrogates her. All right, I can go get my little cat friend and get whatever I want out of you, or I can plug up every breathing hole in your body so you suffocate. And then both nostrils are plugged up with webs. Spider Wasp continues. Now, you see, I'd like to know what's going on here before we bleep kill you. Did you see what happened to your Pope friend? All I have to do is call her over here and she's going to do that to you. Nyx arrives in the next shot and strikes Sister Inquisitor in the face with a large mace, knocking out several teeth. All right, bleep. Now that we have your attention, this is my friend Nyx. Her moral compass is not quite as pointed north as mine. In fact, I have a feeling she would rather enjoy ending you right now. Before she can answer, the video shifts again as Nyx hits her with her dark energy again. Spider Wasp continues. Oh, this is not going to go well for you. Sister Inquisitor coughs up blood and says, what do you want? Spider Wasp replies, what were you doing with Aralim and what's going on here? And she says, let me down, I'll take you there. And then she's enveloped in darkness again and carried away by Nyx. The whole group gathers round and Spider Wasp says, the bleep in the black ball has something she wants to share with us. <laughs> the ball dissipates and the body of Sister Inquisitor falls out, lifeless from the encasing onto the pavement. Her body is blurred out due to the graphic nature of the moment for the television broadcast. At this point, the scene cuts back to Reverend Loss. These good followers of our holy order were tortured at the hands of a band of super-powered murderers. We have additional footage of, mul of a multitude of other individuals wreaking havoc on our fair city in recent weeks, which we will be featuring when our order goes live on our online network le later this week. But under these horrible circumstances, our church feels that we can no longer stand idly by while this dangerous cadre of vigilantes roam our streets. It has come to our attention that this man, and he holds up a photo of Darius Wonder, is harboring not only these murderers, but a handful of other wayward and troubled superpowered youths in a so-called safe house known as the House of Ganymede. And to add insult to injury, they have defiled a house of worship, the former church of the Holy Innocents in Midtown Manhattan to shield these wayward souls from the public eye. The House of Blue Lights now has solid evidence that this is a training ground for a dangerous grouping of out-of-control villains who intend to continue their reign of terror emanating from the tragedy that has fallen mankind. Humanity must take a stand against these false gods. I beg the American government to step in and put an end to this inherent evil that plagues our community and the world at large. And that cuts back to the station. Our station has turned over this footage to the authorities. We will have more on this story as it develops. And the room is silent. Fuck. I think that <laughs> How fast can you get a press conference going? We need How to fast can we get everybody out of here? <laughs> no, we need to meet this thing head on. We need to fight their propaganda with our own message, and we need to go public immediately. We need to explain that we need to get everybody the you have. We need to get everybody the hell out of here. I think the cat now honestly has a point, Colin. 
and that's um, Lee uh, that's speaking up. If if we try to move everyone right now, we're only going to admit to the problem that he is stating in that broadcast. If Darius and the kids stand their ground here and show that they're doing nothing wrong, then I think we can weather this mess. Darius, whatever it takes, you've got my support in whatever legal concourse we have to take to help protect this place. It would also do well if we could somehow inhibit the rollout of their website, if we know any people that are tech savvy on that. People have problems with startups all the time, and the longer that we can delay them getting this message out as far as possible, the okay. better. But we need to do damage control immediately. Um, when you say that, um, you hear footsteps coming up from downstairs, and it's Vera Cantor. Uh, coming, running into the room at this point, she, the social worker at the house of Ganymede. And she interrupts you guys as you're talking about this, and she says, guys, there's a situation in the lobby. Damage control was at the doorstep. This was not the damage control that I meant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darius simply says, shit. All right. Head to the dormitory, stay there. Let me see what I can do to handle this. Yes, I, uh, perhaps we should even lay low. We, we have a couple of days before we'll have a base of our own. Quick mental note to the guys in the group. We'll have a base in a couple of days, according to Mr. Lee. Uh, we spoke last night about it. Okay. Just care. Uh -huh. Hold, hold up for a little bit here. I can hold them off. I guarantee it. I've dealt with Hogue before, and I know she's jumping the gun. But go ahead. Who go ahead? Uh, sorry, you, I, I think I cut you off, Clint. Yeah, I was. Uh, Karen, you there? Present as always. Do you have video of everything that happened in our confrontation with the um, Church of Blue Light, correct? I should from my viewpoint? I should be able to do that, yes. And from, can you pull up from any other viewpoint that may have been in that location? That may be a little bit more problematic. Uh, it's probably already gone. Um, it's already been wiped. Take look at everything that happened. There's a couple things you may want to pull out. Um, like Nick's killing. Um, what's her face? Uh, uh, the, killing the Shadow Pope. Um, but definitely show that um, killing the sister was an accident and send it to every news organization in the city and in the nation. We may want to do a little careful editing of our own, but yes. I trust Karen to do that. Uh, give me a roll on her uh, ability, which I think is on the ama amazing mm -hmm. column. Uh, do, 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 do. Can I call Karma on that? Since it's not me? Yeah, you can still call Karma, yeah. Karma. Um, and to, oh yeah, we can get that to yellow. Easy. Okay. All right, and then I can, we can deal with that here in a little bit. Um, and that's probably going to take some time anyway. Right. Yeah. So, um, I'm assuming that probably uh cuddle bear is going to be eavesdropping on uh this oh, conversation yeah, and yeah. um 
So Darius goes downstairs. Uh, and the folks from damage control have been kept in the lobby. Um, before I do this, I should probably say, uh, what is Colin, your range on your power absorption? 20 areas. Okay. So, yep. Let me know if I feel anything new. Well, just uh, get out your pen. It's out. <laughs> when in doubt, whip it out. <laughs> so I get to the right screen. <laughs> well, oh my God. Damn. Damn. Okay, so. You have empathy of amazing. Invulnerability of incredible. I brought some guns. Uh, I'm going to save that one because you're really going to like that one. Empathetic. <laughs> uh, atomic growth of good. Atomic growth. And then this is the one you're really going to like. Molecular disequilibrium. Let me, let me say this again. <laughs> molecular disequilibrium. I can't even I can't say it. Disequilibrium. disequilibrium. Uh -huh. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Now, that what? is a catch-all that gives two separate powers. Okay. Phasing at amazing. Invisibility at amazing. Oh. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and um, change my um, the uh, do, 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 density manipulation. Mm -hmm. We'll just go ahead and change that over to the molecular disequilibrium. Okay. So that actually gives you two extra powers. Yes. <laughs> in 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 that so uh, i knew you would probably like that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's a good two for as well and both of the and both of those are at amazing right that's correct yes okay so you guys are through um cuddle bear eavesdropping on the conversation downstairs and you hear a woman's voice a, a voice that two out of the four of you have heard before <laughs> in a basement in a basement yeah at uh, at the hell's kitchen precinct hmm. and uh for those of you that uh that maybe need a little refresher the character that she played was, was played by tyne daly in the first uh spider-man mm -hmm. film we ran because she was coming after us right yeah yeah that was that was funny you're like, Can you phase us out of here? And I was like, nope. And I just like, <laughs> <laughs> nope. See ya. <laughs> so she begins the conversation. Mr. Wander, Anne Marie Hogue, Department of Damage Control. These are my associates, Sadie Deaver and Agent Cleary. I assume you saw the news earlier this morning. We are here simply on a fact finding mission. The Reverend Stephen Laws of the House of Blue Lights has made some very serious allegations regarding some young individuals that may or may not be staying here at your facility. We have reason to believe that these same individuals were involved in an attack on the Hell's Kitchen police precinct and may be connected with the murder of a detective, Christopher McCarty. Unfortunately, we don't have the identities of these subjects other than the footage that was released to the press. With your permission, we would like to speak to some of your residents. And uh, Darius says, well, Miss Hogue, Director Hogue, if you don't mind. Director Hogue, my apologies. Director Hogue, our organization is built on the promise of protection, 
of our residents, the vast majority of which are minors who have come to our safe house for their safety and to be free of persecution. All of them has been, have been displaced by the blip, and it is our solemn duty here at the House of Ganymede to offer them sanctuary. It would be unfair of me to put these minors into a situation with officers of the law, such as yourself, without proper counsel. Since you stated that this is a fact-finding mission, I assume you have the proper paperwork to go along with this activity. I was hoping that wouldn't be necessary. Well, Director, under these circumstances, I'm afraid it is entirely necessary. Well, Mr. Wanderer, if that is the case, that can be arranged. I was hoping we could do this the easy way, but if you're going to put me in this position, I have to warn you that by taking steps in this direction, it may put you and your work here under undue scrutiny. I suppose I'll have to take my chances, Director. Have it your way, Mr. Wonder. We should have that warrant within 24 hours. And I'll look forward to showing you around at that time. Have a good day, Mr. Wonder. You too, Director. And then you hear the front door open and close. And after a few minutes, uh, Clint, you kind of feel the power kind of go away. Mm -hmm. I'll go. I'll um, go. But, go downstairs and talk. Yeah, exactly. But, but the empathy—you still feel it somewhere around, but not the invisibility. Hmm. Not the invisibility. Invisibility's right. gone. Yeah. And this is true invisibility, not illusionary, Ill illusory invisibility. Correct. Okay. Hmm. So that will work on cameras as well. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. It's like you're reaching in the darkness there, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. creepy. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll run. My cat. I'll go down. I'll go downstairs. Yeah. Catch we'll, Darius. We'll meet up. We'll meet up. And I'll be like, uh, we might have to up our timetable for our new base of operations. Hey, Darius, how many people were here? Um, Three downstairs. Three downstairs? Yes. Uh, they were two uh, individuals, uh, a male and a female. Uh, and I can show you some pictures of them if you would like to see them. You I'd might actually see, recognize them. I'd Hold love on. to see them. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> and... There's the other. So Sadie Deaver, if you watched, um, well, both of these, if you watched Miss Marvel, these were two of the folks that were part of damage control uh, in the Miss Marvel series. I'm not so, seeing, this, not seeing, not the, seeing second the second one. one. Okay, let yeah. me get that up. Sorry, I forgot to click the button there. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, her. Mm -hmm. Itch. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As soon as as soon as I saw that show, I was like, "Oh, I'm using these guys." <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched it yet, but she always oh, yeah. plays a bitch. She does. <laughs> yeah, she was great in Orange Is the New Black. Um, but uh, so yeah, um, something's weirds going on. There are powers galore in those people. They've probably decided to step up their game, considering the state of affairs. Yeah, but now they're sending supers after supers. Um, one of them had empathy powers, and I'm still feeling it. Did they leave anything behind? Uh, you mean downstairs? Yeah. Or outside, or anywhere. Well, I, I don't know. I... Let the door hit them on the way out, so to speak. I'm still feeling it. 
Yeah, you Don't are. Play hot cold. Is it stronger? No. And and again, you just feel the power. That's it. I mean, you you get no sense of direction on that. As long as they are within your radius, right? You feel it, but you cannot pinpoint it unless you decide to use a like a power stun. I'm going to try power stun. See if I can pinpoint where this is coming from. Okay. You got a yellow, you can get it up to a red. Yep. Mm -hmm. I will do it. Okay. All right. So this kind of gives you a little bit of a, of a somewhat of a radar sense, but it's really tough for you to kind of follow. But you feel it coming from uh, out front of the uh, House of Ganymede mm -hmm. and probably across the street. Headed in that direction. Okay. Now, I, how are you just going outside on the main floor yeah I'm going out to street level okay all right so once you get out there you're kind of looking around and you can feel it uh mm -hmm. directionally from the building across the street from you like high up street level um what is the building across like the street up. yeah it feels like it's up it's it's an office building at all Four stories. Yeah, I'll um, web over to it. Up okay. to the roof. All right. Um, you come up onto the roof. And... You see uh, an Asian uh, girl uh, that appears to be in her early to maybe mid-twenties. Mm -hmm. out there and she's dressed in um not the suits that the others were all dressed in uh in the lobby uh but something that's a little bit more tight form fitting somewhat militaristic in uh in in nature uh mm -hmm. but uh and she's got a headset on and as you come up she says mm -hmm. um I've made contact. I will web the headset off of her head. Okay. <laughs> Arma. Oh yeah, that'll be a red. All right. Okay. So you pull it off. And she puts her hands up. She says, I am a member of the US government. You're not helping yourself. <laughs> You're not helping yourself either if you lay hands on me. Not going to. I'm just here watching. Watching why? Watching you. Yeah, I gathered that. Why? Well, who, why do you think? Who are you talking to? I was talking to uh, Agent Deaver. Who's that? My direct superior. And what does he do for the U.S. government? She, actually. What does she do for the U.S. government? Well, she works for damage control. You know, the folks that were downstairs just now asking about you. Mm-hmm. What, what are you trying to do with us? I don't have to tell you that. I am here on a mission. and I am fulfilling my duties. There's two ways that we can do this. Yeah, there we, is. We are not the people that were portrayed in that video given out by the church. Yes, two people died. One of them was accidental. And the other one asked for it. They were the people distributing Special K around the city, creating superheroes. For an organization that is anti-superheroes, they are creating a lot of fake superheroes. They had trapped the angel and were using his essence to create a drug called Special K. We stopped them, we saved the angel, and we are sending the angel back to where he wants to be. Now, What do we do with you? Well, I guess 
we just part ways. But my suggestion is, is you stay right where you are and don't run. Why? Because everything inside of me tells me to get away from this place. Well, then you'll have damage control on your back until they actually find you. That's going to happen anyway. We can have damage control on our back right now, or we can have damage control on our back three steps behind us. That's completely up to you. You've got 24 hours to make that decision. Cuddlebear, you listening to this? Uh, yeah, I would be keeping tabs once you walked out, as far as if, if you're within range. Is it within the 11 areas? I yes. Guess mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah we're we would good. be. Um, yes. Uh, since our plan was pretty much to leave anyway, yes, I agree. We we do not need damage control hindering our movements and wasting our time at this point. We will leave with most haste. Let her go. Oh, yeah. I'm letting her go. I'll throw the headset back to her. And I'll just, and I suggest you be gone in about 15 minutes. I'll know. And tell any of your other buddies around looking at our building, they need to be gone in 15 minutes. We'll know. And I'll just jump off the side of the building down the street and walk across the street back into the front door. Okay. Um, You feel that presence for another 14 minutes. <laughs> okay. And then it, it does go away. Okay. Now that you've done that power stunt, obviously, you know, that's something mm-hmm. that you can continue to work on. on. I just need a, I just need a yellow next time. Yeah, yellow next time, then green, oh, then it's take off the hundred. Gotcha. Okay. Um, as soon as I don't feel it anymore, I'm going to give it five minutes, and then I'm going to go back over to the across the street up to the top of the building again. Mm-hmm. Just to check. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's Make gone. sure she isn't replaced with anyone. Then I'm going to do a cursory, like within a block check of all rooftops. Mm-hmm. Um, Looking when, you know, check for people watching us with, you know, surveillance equipment went through windows, cars, inside van, you know any vans, things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Everything's, well, let me have you roll a uh, intuition. It's amazing, isn't it? <sighs> no, it's not. Karma. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. What Yikes. was it? Oh, okay. okay. Uh, How much karma do you want to spend? <laughs> You definitely didn't see anything. I'll take you to a green. Okay. It's been it's, a, it's I kind of. That's a lot of karma. I just spent the last fifth, 10 minutes. <laughs> Everything seems to be clear. Okay. Um, in the in the radius around the uh, the house, and that includes you trying to sense any other yeah. powers in the air right any new yeah. powers that i don't yeah. know about okay and nothing's turning up so gotcha those powers certainly left the area gotcha okay i'll go back and report that i to my junior sleuthing skills <laughs> um it ap- they appear to be not watching us closely. They probably have some long range stuff, I would think, keeping an eye out on us. But I still feel we need to get out of here. Yes. We could check out our preliminary or what are, what's to be our base of operations. Um, I don't think we want to head there right now because I have a feeling that they will be following us. We could go to our old spot in the subway. Yeah, I think that might be for the best. I'm happy to take you guys over there if you want. That's Lee. But 
you may be right. You, you may be better being somewhere else, especially if this is some place that we're going to be setting up long term. Yep. Then we will literally go to ground. You feel yep. comfortable letting me know where you are so I can find you? I do, yeah. Sure. Does everybody else feel comfortable? Yeah. Just yeah. be comfortable knowing that I'm working for you now and uh, for Darius. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do to keep you all out of trouble in in the immediate future. So we thank appreciate you. that. Thank you for what you've done for me and what you've tried to do for Feast. It ain't over yet. Yes. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's we should probably take Aralyn with us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He will happily, reluctantly come with you. <laughs> I'll promise him numerous Totino's party pizzas <laughs> at the at when this is all over. All right. Uh, yeah, so let's go over there and regroup, figure out what the hell we're going to do now. Perhaps we'll grab supplies before we go to. So we have food. Yeah. Lots of tuna. Hey, yeah. Maya will pack up everything. Yeah, what? She's not going to leave anything. Yeah, she's not going to leave anything anywhere. It's all in her backpack. Okay. So ju just the stuff there at the house again, you mean, right? Or are you going uh, back home? I mean, most of her stuff is in her backpack anyway. She might yeah, have would... some clothing and some things back at her grandmother's, but. Most yeah, I wouldn't suggest any of us going home. They know who we are. Uh, no, I don't. Actually, she said that she doesn't. She actually did say we don't have their identities. They Your know... face was the first time. Yeah. It was in the suit. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you were suit. in the suit? Yeah. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. all they know at this point is yeah. a, a cat in Iron Man armor. <laughs> Uh, a woman in all black, a glass figure, and uh, a dude in, in a Spider-Man, Iron Man hybrid armor. Yeah. So. That's but that's what I was saying. When you were talking to the person with the headset, were you Colin or were you uh, spider possible? I was Colin. Oh, you that's were? The first, that's the first okay. time they've seen I would have been Colin, yeah. I oh, wouldn't okay. have thought of it. I wouldn't have thought of it. Okay. I, I was assuming that you went over as Spider Wasp. Yeah, same here. Well, I didn't say I. Well, I didn't say I suited up, did I? I mean, if you want to allow me to retroact that, I would be more than happy to. <laughs> Does Colin have a background? I, I'm going to say from from the standpoint of the GM, when you said that you were spider webbing over there, I'm assuming that you're in armor anytime you're okay. spider webbing. So, gotcha. okay, yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, hey, I know. Yeah, of course, of course, I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so uh, yeah, you're right. We could walk around. I mean, hide the cat, and we can walk around the street as ourselves. Oh, well, the cat could be just get the cat out of armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but I mean, a girl. It's the seven she, foot angel we got a problem with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the seven foot angel we got a problem with. But as soon as we take care of that, then, you know, I can change into whoever I want to be yeah. to throw them off. I, I can have no idea I have that ability. Freely at night. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Is They don't know much. Is there is there any benefit in buying? We have to get into that facility, yes. The blue lights. Oh, I was I was suggesting that we investigate there. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering, turning myself in. To not the blue a good idea. No, absolutely not. We would be inside. Absolutely not. Yeah, but we we not without knowing what they have going on in there. We will need to know their setup or layout, at least how many people they have, uh, potentially supers that we'd be dealing with. Um, so how do we recon them without them knowing? Uh, well, I do like the idea of kind of uh, possibly 
you know, going in as uh, prospective co- converts. Or so- we could find someone, one of their members, keep him captive. I could act like him to get in. Yeah. Uh, you'd require would a lot a- of rec- recon, though, to get his behaviors right, right? Like I feel, I feel like since they're trying to swell their numbers anyway, if we send you guys in as like uh, willing con- converts, you'll get. It's true. Point. We could say we saw the we saw the episode. We saw the what happened to them. We yeah, feel for them. And, and yeah, and I can. I can oh, still actually, now we can't. As Maya just realizes that she does not look like a, a teenager, and she kind of just looks around quietly. Like, oops. Well, they're they're not teen. Or just kids, right? So, um, I'm, I'm, I, I look, I look yeah. like an adult. Yeah. Right. Um, the House of Blue Lights is for anybody. Colin, give, Colin gives you a look when you yeah. <laughs> do that. Well, we could be a homeless mother and son. Little, she kind of just, she kind of just walks a little faster to get out of the conversation. Because <laughs> again, he can, he can look like whatever. He could look like your, yeah. your peer or whatever. Yeah, we could, right, right, or am I mistaken? Like the house. I blue just blue. call up uh, if she's pulling house. I, I could be your husband. <laughs> she kind of just looks back and says, "Would you like that?" And Dragon, I think I I I lost what you were saying there. Can you repeat what you were saying? Uh, the House of Blue Lights recruits pretty much anybody, right? They're just like a more of a religious Re- religious religion. organization. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't necessarily matter. What age you guys are if you sneak in. Yeah, but if we're just, how much access are we going to have as just converts, as um, newbies? We can kind of play it by ear. If it looks like you can sneak away to look around at more places, definitely do so. But depending on what kind of a tour we get, you never know. Sometimes I just go, well, wait a minute, guys. Go into this alley for a minute. I pull them into the nearest alley. Okay. Maya says, it is disturbing me how quickly I just did that. <laughs> just, hey, some random dude I've known for two days and a cat told me to go into an alleyway. Oh, you've known them for at least a week at this point. Yeah, so. yeah, that's right. Yeah. I just looked and I said, well... <laughs> hey, I feel like it's been at least a couple. <laughs> yeah. Cuddle, since you mentioned being able to get away, I did pick up something new and... I pull the invis. I go invisible. Oh. Um. Can you guys see me? I can still smell you. I'll walk over and I'll pick up something. That's impressive. And I'll s- snap back. Yeah, one of the uh, damage control people had that availability, so I picked it up. Um, I can still phase through things, too. That so I like, I walk into the dumpster. Don't you go walking into the girls' dorms at night now? No, 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 no. I, I, I did great. Right. I would ne- ne- I, no, no, no. Ne- How long have you had this power? I would never do that. Now let me explain what this looks like. <laughs> this is like a shimmer, and when he goes from one place to another especially when he's phasing it's like there are mirror images of him that go in succession to one another and he's semi-transparent when he goes into the phase when he goes invisible again it's that kind of shimmery kind of look um and then then you don't see him interesting but he like leaves a trail of himself as he moves when he's in phase. Phasers, that's cool. That is weird that you were doing. How are you doing that? Why is that happening? I just, I just can do it now. Yes, it one of happen. the damage control people had this really cool power I picked up. So, you know, I could already do the density manipulation. So I lost a little bit of things with it, but I can still phase into things, which is very helpful. Plus, I have invisibility, so I just figured I'd pick it up if it helped the cause. Yes, yeah, so I get out of this. Maya, the you Sorry, Sorry I, I, I lost both of you guys. So. Yeah, I talked over Dragon, so good. Yeah. 
I was just saying, I would be careful with how you phase. You seem to be disrupting the essence of reality around you. Yeah, I'll play with it a little bit before I really use it. Maya will solidify uh, dark energy as uh, basically like a potato sack around his legs and see if he can get out of it. Okay, I'll try to get out of it. I'm not going to require just a, just rolls a... for either one of you guys, but yeah, whoop, whoop, yeah he, he walks right out of it. Oh, that's cool. Did I feel anything? Or sense anything? That I, mean, I don't think I really knew anything when I would do it before. I was just curious what mm-hmm. I felt. Like, if I had a tingle, I got maybe, a... maybe a little tingle. Okay. <laughs> little Peter call... tingle. <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I tingle <laughs> you? <laughs> oh wow! But that means like, that okay. one of the other people, one of the people at damage control, can get out of your black dark matter. Then exactly. keep that in mind. Go invisible. Go invisible. I went invisible. And, and then I'll put like the behind where he was, just like a black slab, mm-hmm. to see if there's any because it's deep black. Is there any shimmer or anything when he's invisible? No, not like when he, not when he goes full invisible. You see the shimmer that that uh, lasts for about six seconds, and then then it's gone. Well, that's good. Yes. Um, you want to try something really scary? <laughs> no. No, I'll just <laughs> go into phase, and I'll try and hit. You. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't you want to know if you're going to be physically. Like some, what if some dude comes and punches you? And you Wait a minute. Let me try something. Okay. I'm invisible. I'm going to armor up. Okay. Um, does it does it work with the armor on? Is that the question? Uh huh. Yeah, it does. And again, I was assuming you were in the armor, but okay. <laughs> yeah. No, because no, we're just walking down the street. Right? Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. We're in the alleyway. That's, that's right. Yeah. We're in the yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. Tell me when uh, you're ready. I'm... What? No! What do you wait? What are you kind of do? She's gonna shoot gonna try and hit you. Yeah, no. shoot you. Try and hit you. If you're in phase, you you went through the the thing. We got to see how how okay. much you can get through without being damaged. If this hurts. I'm going to hate you. <laughs> well, fine. Okay. Shoot me. All right. Um, I'm gonna dial it down. Okay. And do just a, a good uh, energy bolt. Okay. And I'm basically hitting the black slab. Because sure. he's invisible right in front of it. I just can shoot at it. Okay. And, uh, uh, they can't see me, but hey. my my eyes are closed. And I'm like... <laughs> well, are you invisible and in phase? That's what I'm, a good question. I was going to say, you might want to turn invisible just so she can shoot you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> what? what? He, he comes visible looking like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I immediately <laughs> just fling him in. And yeah. I think probably just for the comedy of it, you you he comes out of phase when he goes <laughs> visible again because he hasn't gotten the feel for it just yet. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <him> ah! <laughs> what was did that? The, did the bolt hit him or go through him? No, well, I, he since he went out of phase, we screwed well, it up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Let's, all right, all right. yeah. Well, let's try it again. Try it again. Try it again. Ow! Go, ow! Go into phase. Go into phase. It was that's my energy bolt, but that was oh. really light. I really wouldn't have done it. Okay. I didn't think you would have. Oh, okay. Lived. Okay. Oh, okay. Fine. I'll 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 start phase. Okay. All right. And so. this time, um, she shoots a, a good energy bolt, mm-hmm. but also uh, a pseudopod comes. From behind and tries to like swipe through about his body i'll yeah, jump when i see that <laughs> but that was behind you you can't see it oh okay and Am i think I you probably around? still had your had your eyes closed don't you <laughs> yeah probably yeah <laughs> sure i did uh the bolt goes through uh and the tendril swipes through no damage immediately she drops everything and uh, the slab disappears and she's like calm you're right. You're right. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. I already did. Looks what? like we're good. Yeah. Okay, and as she right. walks, she walks over and kind of says, 
now it won't be so that difficult to kill me if you have to. She turns around and starts walking back. It's like, let's go. Got to get to the subway before subway closes. Actually, we don't. But... I thought we were going to the subway. We are, but we can get in there anytime. Well, I was going to get some food. Oh, you meant subway like the sandwich shop? Yeah. <laughs> it's right over there. <laughs> I can't be the only hungry person. We literally went to bed, woke up, and we just were out. Yeah, I, we haven't I, even I, gone to bed yet. No, this oh, is yeah, the, yeah, we have. This is morning. Yeah, oh, morning time. Yeah. I thought this was still morning. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It was the next. Um, yeah. yeah. We okay. would have to be fully balanced. Yeah, let's <laughs> get something to eat, and then we'll go. We need to take care of Errol and figure out what the hell we're going to do with him yeah. before the government gets a hold of him. Well, he's with us. Yep. He's wearing a big overcoat and, and a fedora <laughs> and just kind of hunched over to make him look a little bit smaller. <laughs> and he shapeshifted to look more human. So he looks like, like three kids on their shoulders. And yeah, so I will, <laughs> right. uh, you know, as we're leaving the alley, I'll just shapeshift into some random, random person. Mm-hmm. So that I'm not calling. But yeah, you guys can get some some lunch and then straight meat at the subway and then head to mm-hmm. the subway. Subway, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as we're walking, I'll ask Aralem. So, where do you want to be, dude? Well, I I hope to return home somehow. Okay, how can we help you do that? I may have a lead on that. Really? Yes. What's that? I spoke, I spoke with Mr. Lee and uh, of Darius, and they spoke of uh, Sorcerer Supreme. What? Yes, apparently. Sounds like a bad pizza. <laughs> yes. It sounds like an excellent pizza. There are a great, the, the city never ceases to amaze, uh, but with aliens and angels, apparently there are great wizards as well. And one of which has fallen to this blip, but his uh, successor, Mr. Wong, might be able to help us. Okay, how do we get a hold of him? Um, he gave me the address, right? Bleecker Street. Yes. Well, I, uh... I know the address. We can go and seek him out. Okay, well, do we want to go there, then? Might as well. He said he might need a day to set up the appointment. I think if we show up with him pointing to Erlem, he'd see us. Maybe he won't like me he, 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 I was under the impression that uh, he had many responsibilities in his new duties and was not currently available. We can try. Yeah, let's go try. Okay. What else are we going to do? Go hide, in a, hide underground for a day? Let's go make something happen. Yes. Okay. All right, so you guys wonder uh, towards... Uh, and I may be wrong on my numbers, so forgive me if that's the case, people of the internet. <laughs> but I think it's 21 Bleecker Street. Hold on, let's get this All right. right. Yes, I am. Let, let's see if my Marvel comic knowledge is uh, is up to snuff. Because I didn't think it was. 17 177A. Ah, right, okay. Right. I was gonna say, I knew it was I three it, numbers. I think I knew it was, it was three tw- numbers. 21 Jump Street, maybe. Yeah, it, you, <laughs> I think you were. And I was thinking of Sherlock Holmes's address. So, uh, but I knew it was three numbers. 177A Bleaker Street. Okay, there we go then. <laughs> I, I'm a failure. You are. What the God. <laughs> I'm gonna take your fanboy card away. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, okay, so 
one seventeen A. Bleakers. No, one seven seven. One seven seven A. One seven seven A. Write that down. Bleaker Street. Don't oh, fucking. No, I don't have a pen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys show up, uh, and it is a uh, very kind of Victorian Gothic looking building uh, close to um, Central Park. Uh, that has a very distinct large window up on the roof uh, that has a very intricate uh, and, and very specific looking uh, pattern to it. Uh, it feels very out of place uh, in, mm -hmm. amongst the uh, the rest of the buildings in the area. Uh, so you th think a sorcerer would live in that building. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, it, there you are. You found it. Yeah, go up and knock on the door. Gong, 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 and there's a large echo from behind the door. And uh, you s wait there for just a few minutes, and uh, finally the door opens, and you see a man dressed in kind of greenish. Uh, robes with yellow accents, uh, shorter uh, Chinese man uh, with a little bit of a goatee, uh, and he's carrying a cup of tea. <laughs> what? Can I help you? Are you Mr. Wong? Not Mr., just Wong. And oh. uh, who, who are you? Oh, I'm Colin. Uh, I, I'm not buying Boy Scout cookies. So uh, no, 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 no. Um, um, I, I will. We, do, we, we need your we are help. friends of Darius Aquarius and Martin Lee. Darius Aquarius. Do you know his alter ego? Oh, Mister Aquarian. The Aquarian, yeah, okay. and it's it's Darius Wonder. It's uh, oh, it's, Darius it's, Wonder. It's yeah. Maya that always wants to call him Darius Aquarius. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So I say uh, the Aquarian um, and Mister oh. Lee. You're all right. Um, um, we, we can we come inside for a second? We need your help with something. Uh, and I just walk right in. All right. Well, come right in then. <laughs> Please excuse us <laughs> for disturbing you. Um, yeah. Um, and he he looks out the door and looks both ways, and then to nothing he says, uh, "Teenagers," Cliff, and shuts the door. Um. Yeah. So. Um, like I. I just. Um, yeah, take off, take off your heirloom. Just show them who you are. Oh, and he takes off the hat, takes off the coat, and then blow <laughs> hole in the face. Uh, oh, all right. Now we have something to talk about. <laughs> we need help getting him home. Yeah, have you been watching the news? Yes. Uh, you're familiar with the House of Blue Light? Well, yes, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen the footage on TV of the attack on them? Religious fanatic, yes. Um, that was us. You, you are the ones that were in the video? The heavily doctored video. The, yes, the heavily doctored video. You see, and like as he does that, you see him go whoop, like this, and these two bands form around his. No, 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 no. We're 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 actually we we think we we're the good guys. Before. Yes. Okay. Um, and and the bands go away. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I um we um we're just. 
and I'll just bl- I'll I'll just blurt everything out about sure. you know special K what we've gone through. Da, 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 da. This is Erlen. We just we're just trying to get him somewhere safe and home. And through all of that, uh, as you guys begin the conversation, he leads and I will you... and I will talk about impersonating Spider Man. Okay. okay, I want to point that out. He leads you all into his study uh, off to the side. Um, and obviously, I don't think I probably need to talk about the Sanctum Sanctorum. You pretty much know what that looks like from the films. But obviously, there's this big grand staircase as you guys come in. And then off to the left there uh, is a, uh, a very kind of almost british looking uh study and conservatory off to the side this would have been where uh dr strange had his little conversation with thor um and uh you guys all sit around he gets tea for everyone and brings that into you guys and you sit there and can i have a coke (laughs) sure he changes the coke uh, the tea into coke for you (laughs) i would rather have milk and he changes the tea into milk for you. <laughs> um, tell him everything that you can about Erlum and about yourselves and all of that. So he's he's soaked all of that in. <clears throat> Maya will show the pendant. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you've filled him with a lot of information to take in. And he says, okay, so your main reason for being here with me in the immediate present is to find a way home for this wayward angel, correct? Yeah, we need to we need to make sure he's safe, but we, we also need to make sure that he is out of play. Yeah, it's out of, yeah. Is it, don't, don't take this the wrong way, Errol, but he's not a hindrance to us. Hmm. And the plane that you are from, uh, Errol, is, is the Gregorian plane that is referred to as New Eden, correct? That is correct. The calendar you, people? Hmm? Uh, Grigori, Grigorin is the way that he uh, he pronounced it. So they they are of the Grigori is the uh, the type of angel that he is. You wish to go there now, um, if um, that, if that is possible, yes. Yeah. Well, I suppose say your goodbyes if you need to. <laughs> And he begins to spin his hand uh, in the air in a uh, small circle of sparks begin to appear and it expands. And then you guys uh, look into one of the most beautiful uh, multicolored gardens uh, that you have ever seen. It's like nothing uh, on planet Earth. Um, and, and Beetlejuice sandworms jump through and destroy everything. <laughs> <laughs> Progress mind is mildly blown. That easily you can <laughs> reverse the realms, really. I'm just looking at long. That's what being a sorcerer supreme uh, can can allow us. So are you yes. doing figure eights around his legs? <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah. I just kind of sidled up to him. I would learn some of your mystical ways. This is fascinating. Well, I've never taught a cat, but <laughs> there's been stranger things. Uh, I mean for a show. Erlum, uh, the faceless angel, if he had a face, uh, would be weeping right now. Uh, but he walks over uh, to uh, Cuddle Bear first, and he bends down. Uh, and he pats him on his head and he says to you now little one now that you have seen a glimpse of where I came from perhaps keeping an open mind would serve you well it has been a pleasure to be in your presence 
take care of these children. I will do my best. Uh, and then he goes over to um, Colin and he says to you, while the cat is the caretaker, you, whether you like to admit it or not, are the leader. You are the glue that keeps this team together. Lead them well. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try and... Um, I'm so, so, sorry, I can't get you any more Totinos. <laughs> That's all right. I'll be back in 10 years. You're coming back? I can't stay away for long. Okay, I guess you can explain that to me in 10 years. Book me up. I will. And he goes over to Maya. And he says to you, we all have a darkness inside of us. Be not afraid of the darkness inside you. Become one. And then he walks into the portal. Maya's going to kind of take a peek <clears throat> into where he's going. Yeah, me. Yeah, Colin would totally be. <laughs> yeah. You probably may what have to hold that? Colin back. He'd probably get a little bit too close. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and Wong will gently send some magical tendrils to you and just, just pull you back just a little bit, <laughs> just so you don't go in there. Would it be possible for us to survive in his realm? I ask Wong. Um, he's going to close that before he answers that. <laughs> <laughs> he says it is likely, yes, that you would survive. But I would imagine, I've not been there myself, but I would imagine that time moves differently there. That's one of the dangers of traversing the realms. Time may move faster, it may move slower. And if you don't have the right precautions in place before you go there or know enough about it, then lots of different things can happen on your home plane when you're not looking. Okay, so... We are in your debt, sir. What powers am I getting off of him? <laughs> uh, magic. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it would just be like one. <laughs> yeah. like magic. Of... Just magic. Yeah. Which you cannot absorb. Oh, I know. <laughs> I just look at him, I go, what the hell are you? I am the Sorcerer Supreme of planet Earth. What does that mean? He's the guy we should have gone to first. That's what it means. You've seen Harry Potter, right? Yeah. yeah. What are you saying? You're One of those. Uh, yeah, better really? than that. I didn't read those books whatever um long so you know what this is you got a nice little sparkly disc for this that is probably going to take a little bit more work tell me what you're wanting to do with her Um, not end the world and not be responsible for keeping Nyx under control. I don't know why it needs to be me. Can't you give it to an Avenger or something that's more appropriately? I've so, seen things like this before. And when I say things, I mean the medallion that's on your chest. You can't get that off, can you? 
I can. But I will also kill you. <laughs> we were all like, huh? Oh. No. <laughs> Surely Why? there's another way. Yeah, there's got to be another way. There's, I mean, in my research, I'm, you know, this is like a, it needs a vessel. That's just me. Don't we need, can't we just do, I mean, if my dad found this, that wasn't on a living being. It had to be buried or trapped or protected by something else. Maybe we just need to do that. But it has now, both physically, mentally, and emotionally bonded with you. And if I take any part of that equation away, even with the magics that I have, there is a sacrifice that must be made. And that sacrifice is you. And then we have the problem of what do we do with it and with the entity inside of it after we separate it. Well, that's the prison that I'm... Okay. So we can't get it out of me. Hey, Colin, we got two, two things. Correct me if I'm wrong. Finding some way to make me more capable and stronger to contain Nyx. Or we need some sort of prison that will work in case she gets out. I believe I that's I the only thing. That right? Help you with part of one of those things. I'm I'm currently work, working on a way that I think may help you exert more control. Maya, mm -hmm. if she wanted out, she would get out. I don't think she can. I think that's what I'm doing. Yes, there there is a symbiotic effect at play here that we do not still quite fathom. Let me ask you this, Maya. You said that this medallion was sent to you <laughs> by your father. Yeah, it was sent to my grandmother, <clears throat> his mother-in-law of all. And it was in this box. Yeah, and she'll fish out the box with the cloth that you on it. And your grandmother was a victim of the blip, yes? Yes. What drew you to her house in the first place? It was the only place I knew in the city. And I was upstate in boarding school. I came down to the city, which I regularly do on vacations and whatnot. But my father is overseas, or was, I don't know if he still is. And uh, my mother was living with her. And she was teaching. I think there's more to it. I like think she, I think she was me? calling to you or Perhaps your father was guiding you there. You said you knew a lot of these. Did you know? I, I knew people? of things like them. Do you, did you know any people? I've run across some over the years, yes. Are they still around, you know? Maybe we can talk to them and figure out how they're dealing with it. It's possible. You're a good man, Wong. Appreciate it. Um, I guess we could go back whenever. I don't know what else we we don't have to go back to the sewer, do we? No. Um, I got I mean, a question though. Out for a little bit. Um, my face is ready. Wong, Sorcerer Supreme. Yes. Did the blip? Did that just happen on Earth, or did it happen on every planet in the universe? It happened across the universe, yes. My predecessor, my friend, Dr. Strange, was off planet at the time that it happened. So then do you know what caused this? 
the infinity stones and a single act of one man the man known as Thanos the alien known as Thanos but what planet was he from and why Titan. would he do the thing Titan and why would he do it he was under the impression that reality itself was going to cave in on itself and by culling the population of the universe um, delay that by a millennia so he was a madman or a genius <laughs> i am a genius You're a smart cat. <laughs> but, yeah, but I don't have uh, intentions of genocide. Well, no, he didn't. It's not genocide. He didn't kill an entire race, just half of it. <laughs> you're being, you're arguing semantics. It's still wholesale death. Well, wow. this... what if somebody was wearing this and they blipped hmm that's quite a question I wonder I'm... if I can can you find out who wore this before with your spookiness hmm I play D&D I know that's <laughs> That's a distinct possibility. Maybe if we find out what happened to the previous <clears throat> vessel, we might be able to figure out how to stop it, how to control it, or... Anyway. So, uh, can I uh, book an appointment with you, like, what, twice a week? For five <laughs> hours? Maybe. He says, no time like the present. <laughs> There's our cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now you and I need to have a very, very distinct <laughs> conversation. So. <laughs> have a good night, gentlemen. All right. Good night. See you. Uh, take it easy, guys. See ya.